Let's Why have not? a nose. Let's have a look at them. You've owned a lot of cars in the last 15 years, whatever. Yeah. Last... Some have come, some have gone. Yeah. But these are the ones that are here right now. Is this all of them right now? No, I've got a couple of others hanging out there. I've got a, an Alpha and a Chevy pickup truck. So that's my other token gesture to hot rodding. Yeah. Because I used to have a 56 Chevy. You did. And I kind of missed it. I missed it, that simple rumbling thing. And I always wanted a C10. So I finally found one in the US. It was, wasn't at all expensive. My brother went and test drove it first, which was quite fun. <laughs> and he said, it's very good. And you know, it's a nice car, except for one thing. I said, what is it? I said, it's a Chevy, not a Ford. Oh. Well, that kind of hurt his feelings a bit. What I like about my cars, perhaps except for this one, which was a difficult one to find, and of course this one, they're, they're of a time when I dreamt of having these cars because they were attainable. Yeah. And that in many ways was the whole ethos of Jaguar. They were yeah. attainable. They weren't overly exotic, but they were just on the edge. That's right, yeah. And my, it's important that my cars are like that. They're attainable. This is probably the exception. I was going to say, you're not, a, you're not a McLaren F1 guy. No. I love driving. But I love driving cars which I feel that I can belong to. I'm like that because I don't own any supercars. I don't actually want to own a supercar. Hmm. I think I'm very fortunate to have done it, but... I think supercar saloons are actually more interesting. I do. You know, like the M series and the, you know, like the kind of super and hot Jags and the AMGs. I find them a little bit more interesting. I'd rather have an XFRS estate. Yes. You know what I mean? That's yes. absolutely fire breathing, yes. but with a dog guard in it. Yeah. But 993. 993, my favourite 911 of all time. It's such such a pretty car, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's just it's got a totality about it, which I've always loved the simplicity of the front and the way it all wraps back in itself. Because I always had an obsession that cars should kind of wrap back in themselves and encompass the wheels. And I think this does this quite quite I, well. The headlights and the, like you say, the front you wings know, are just look at the highlights here. They're just beautifully yeah, it is done. Good. You know that somebody spent months executing these forms. I mean months, not days or weeks, but months. I bought this one like this. It's been obviously been tricked up a bit. It's what they call a Rook car. It's R-O-O-C-K. It's a German tuning company. And they basically strip the car out and turn it into a pseudo RSR. Right. Hence a number plate. It's not a real I RSR. I, I, I did see that. <laughs> I did see that. It is a lot lighter than the standard one. And it's got the carbon seats, the lightweight seats. It's got track suspension. It's got the right wheels. Uh, it's just, it's adorable to drive. This Absolutely. is the one you're driving home in tonight? Yes, I am, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in the rain. But, but it's hey, okay, because it's know, 9 it's fine. It's waterproof. <laughs> <laughs> this obviously doesn't really need much introduction. No, I realised one day that I'd never owned a car that I'd worked on. So I thought the Vanquish is the one I really should have. Of course, I've driven a lot because I've got company cars, but I never actually owned one. You wanted a particular spec? I wanted an S. Okay. Yeah, because it's the one that I felt had some better value in terms of investment, if nothing else. Not that I buy cars for that reason. Yeah. But I wanted an S. It's a little bit quicker, a little bit more sorted. And that's what this is. It's a 2005 S. It works and it's only got a low mileage, 24,000 miles. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's kind of a, a strange thing. When I drive it, it's remarkably modern. Really? Yeah. I haven't driven as, one of these as in the 911 years. Is, but it's Mark me modern and it feels like a modern. The weight distribution is very good because the engine sits quite far back. It's in like it. in the dash. It's isn't under it? the dash. Yeah, it's yeah. cantilevered over the engine, which the engineers obviously hate doing. But yeah, it kind of, you know, it addresses the aesthetic we wanted, but also the weight distribution. Yeah, and so it actually handles and drives quite well, especially for a car of this era. Um, and probably for that reason, I probably don't drive it very much because the other cars are a little bit more interesting to drive, a little bit more challenging. This car, it, this actually surprises me that you've got one of these. <laughs> I love this. It, I wasn't expecting you no, to be a I TR know. guy. I know, it's, but it's not the flat hat brigade. I bought this because I just simply have always loved TRs, ever since the three, the four, the five, and of course the six. Is this a childhood thing? Yeah, it goes back. In fact, when I was in uh, my late teens, maybe about 19, 20, um, 20 years old, my best friend had a brand new one. Really? Chocolate brown. And we used to drive to London in it, in Edinburgh and Glasgow, and go to the clubs and stuff. So this is in the good old clubbing days. And so I had fond memories of it, and I think that's what hooked me into this. So it's always this reference to something. Yeah. The, the thing about this car is I found this one, again, because it's in very good condition. I put track suspension on it, and that's all, and big brakes. So the underneath of this car is well sorted. But what's really nice about it is it's such a fun car to drive. Yeah. And this is a car, of all the cars I've got, this is the car I drive the most, by far. For the viewers at home that appreciate carburettors, 
It's under this side here. Come, come hither. There you go. Come hither. Look. So normally, this car would be fuel injection, and uh, it wasn't necessarily that reliable. But this car is actually a North American car. Okay. It's been converted, so it had twin SU carburetors when I got it. So it kind of brings the car up to the the performance of the European one. Yeah. With a lot more, dare I say, it, reliability. And a much nice, nicer sound. So let's come round and address the British and Germanness with a, a bit of American. Americana. A good slice of Americana, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You and know, I, again, it's a childhood thing. I fell in love with 32 Fords in particular when I was very young. Um, prompted by some magazines my brother bought for me, some American car magazines. And there I discovered the 32 Ford. Yeah. And I've been in love with it ever since, whether it be a Roadster or a Coupe or, or whatever it might be. So. When you drove it with me in Essex, it was fenderless, no wings in it. Yep. Uh, then I grew the wings and we did some more work to it. That's when I turned up at your wedding in it. Yeah. And all that lovely weather. And, um, <laughs> Terrible weather. And then um, the latest iteration has got a lower roof and a different colour. And that's it. I remember you. It, the, the black paint on this car was absolutely flawless. And then you broke the news to me that you were like, no, I think I'm going to chop it a bit more. And it's like, what does that mean? You're going to repaint it again. It's like, mm. It was beautiful. Mm. Tell, tell us what's under there. So I'm, when was the last time you saw it? Yesterday. All oh, right. OK. This is a, a Windsor 351, small block Ford engine, the proper carburation and flow through manifold and stuff. So it's probably touching 400 horsepower. It's got high lift cams and stuff in it. This is not far off the 351 Windsor engine that was in the GT40, I believe. Right. So it's so of that kind of performance. And these don't weigh a great deal last time. No, they you. don't. You've got to treat this car with a lot of respect. Yeah. You know, it's got two solid axles. Yeah. You know, it's solid <laughs> axles. It does have coilovers on the back, but it's got a leaf spring in the front. So it's quite stable. It's remarkably stable. Its weight distribution is perfect. Is it? Yeah, because the engine's sitting well behind them. Short wheelbase. I mean, the tyre combination, the wheel yeah, combination. Yeah, that's just, just 70s hot rod. Just look, look at the rubber here versus yeah. the rubber down there. You just can't. And, and, and contrary to my whole belief on wheels and tyres, I really wanted this to have the big profile rubber. But the first time I did this, before you even saw it, I had 20-inch tyres with rubber bands on it. 20s. Yeah, and I looked at it, I thought it's all wrong. Yeah. I've still got the wheels, by the way, if you want uh, to buy them. Uh, really? Yeah. All right, we can but, talk. But the notion of, of, of these uh, five-spoke uh, racing wheels was, was absolutely paramount. So they're, they're new to the car as well. Are they American still, racing? They're American racing, yeah. Yeah, the torque yeah. thrusts. The torque I mean, thrusts. So good. Beautiful things. Rough car centers. And very much of a sort of 70s style. Yeah. So it's, uh, that's what it's chasing. This is I it. never in my life dreamt I'd have a 32 that looked as good as this. It's, it's really a dream come true. This is this what one. you work hard for. Yeah. Apparently. I've done. Are they still XJS seats? These are they're XJS seats. They fit perfectly because they're quite petite mm. and they're quite low and they're just a perfect fit for this car. Boy, it smells good in there. Yeah. I wanted the Ford engine in it. I wanted it to be pure and of course working for Ford, I thought it was right. So I bought this engine from Ford um, Racing. Staff department discount? With staff discount. Oh. Now that's a real win. Yeah, that I got, is a I win. I think I got 25% off that's brand new just, crate motor. That's sweet. And it just turned up in a crate and in it went. Manual and box as well. It's a T5 manual box. It's a five speed. That's nice. And there's nothing wrong with that. You know, there's no point in hurting yourself with old fashioned boxes and things. No. Give yourself a little bit of comfort and, yeah. and you know, it's a lovely box. And we're not going to talk vulgar money, <laughs> but I, I do think this car probably owes you a shed load of money. It's probably the most expensive car here. Is it really? Probably. It makes me feel so much better about my Impala Lowrider. Because it's just, I mean, through space of 15 years, yeah, it's absorbed a I lot of I can see your money. brain totting up numbers. I'm, not, I'm never going to work it out. Don't do it. I'm never going to work don't it do out. Don't do it, but, but don't bloody sell it. It's given me enormous amounts of, of joy, yeah. you know, and that's, and you know, when you work hard for something and you earn the money and you actually put it out to buy a body for this or a, a mirror or, or an yeah. engine, it's actually very satisfying. Yeah. Because that's your reward. I mean, you can physically see it. I, the joy for me is the collection of the parts and, yeah. and then seeing it all. Yeah. So I, I love this. Every angle of this car looks absolutely. It's just about the right, letterbox isn't it? rear. That window goes down, by the way, which is quite fun. That winds down. That winds down, yeah. I didn't notice that. Yeah. yeah. Huge. 
little winder inside it. Sexy cool, beast of a car. It's cool. I need to see this out on the road more, Ian. You, yeah, we, we will. Another it's dry. Day. And this is why I think one of the reasons why we clicked in the first place, because my car taste is really, really mm. quite similar. Mm. I just don't have the money to build. Well, to I don't anymore. <laughs> <laughs> But this, I mean, you're saying this has become a bit of a family heirloom inadvertently. It has. I bought this car nearly 25 years ago. It wasn't very old when I bought it. It's probably 18 months old or something. And I saw this for sale and I thought, oh, a new Mini that's not rusty. I must have it. <laughs> and, they're worth and, good money now. And I, I, I bought it on the spot. I just, you know, I said to the guy how much he wants for it. And I, I bought it. I've done things to it. I've done the suspension, I've done the wheels, obviously. What is it, um, 13s is it on? The 13s by 7s, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's... Yeah, the Yokohamas. Yeah. You know, the engine stock, I've got rally racing seats in them, which helps a lot, because, you know, you can go around these corners. I've got four-pot caliper brakes on them. You see, I think, there's, for me, there's more emphasis than when you've got a car to drive. You deal with suspension and the brakes yeah. before, the, before the performance. Yeah. If you get these things sorted, you can drive it quicker handles really well and it's still only got 24,000 miles in it so it's 25,000 so it's um it's just the right vintage oh, this is a keeper this is like right at the end of rover isn't it it's sort it, of it is it hasn't got a british leland badge in it but it doesn't have a bl badge but obviously in the build right now because this is your premises yeah. and if you've this heard is. if you've heard a bit of background noise as we've been chatting today it's because they're smashing through a wall over there to expand this workshop and the studio for the VC25 for the to build them. to build these yeah. yeah yeah this is the chassis car so it's not dressed up it's the mule it's the mule yeah. which we've been using there for nine months stemmed from the fact that I bought the Vanquish and looked at it and wanted to make it better so that's where it came you from. you thought I can probably do this a bit better now. I'll probably do better yeah so yeah. that's that's they're going to be built in here right where we stood mm. Mm. We'd, we we better do you want one well, what? I let you drive. What, one. like a gift or a <laughs> staff discount? I can get you a little discount. Yeah, well, yeah, let's see what I can do. I get 20 grand off it if you want. <laughs> the last car in the room is, 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 is nearly, oh, it's got to be my favourite. For me, it's a toss up between the 32 Ford and the XJC. See, look at it. Look at that. It's quite, uh, it's quite extraordinary. You know, the XJ was a beautiful car, and when it got to the long wheelbase, for me, it was the wrong way around. It's a shorter wheelbase, one that worked. Yeah. And it's, I don't know how many inches shorter it is, but it just makes the overall proportions so much better. And of course, the two doors, a bit longer than normal. But the real classy bit, of course, are the, the pillarless. Pillarless. And this is the know. only XJ Cooper they ever made? Yeah, just a series three. They never three. made another yeah, one? Yeah, never made another no. one, no. Because I kept Very begging you to make one yes I <laughs> the modern one the modern one and you yeah. kindly pointed out that you'd sell about 40 in worldwide and yeah. so it's not a good business no, case. it wasn't a good business case but yeah and this probably wasn't a good business case either <laughs> um however it's just a, such a beautiful car it is um notoriously difficult to make in this area yeah very difficult to make and of course the whole structure of the car was difficult because it had a it had a lot some joins on the roof yeah and some panels on the roof that had to be hand fettled and so the vinyl roof was put on the cars to cover up that so the story goes yeah and i've never been a great lover of vinyl roofs uh, <gasps> so off it came and it got finished off nicely it, I, I love the i don't know what color this is but i really this is actually a, a, a modern day jaguar color is it yes and it's like the wheels i absolutely love the wheels i think they look just they're right. nice aren't they they're not too big they're not too resto moddy yeah i think they're just right it's very elegant, it's very beautiful, it's very graceful, as a Jaguar should be. Mm. And it's just got all these elements of luxury and sportiness that the, the brand stands for. Yeah. This car, I think we're going to go out for a drive-in. Good. Hi, I'm, I'm very excited. I just love this blooming car. Yeah, you need to... Uh, the best bet is to go and get an American one or something, because they're actually... They're not that desirable in the States, no, are they? I don't know where they are. I know they put bloody Chevy small blocks in them, left, right and centre. They did, yeah. Which I'm, 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 not, I'm not down with that. No, but the engines didn't go wrong. No, that's the thing, they're really tough they're engines. They're tough engines. It's not like it's in a, you know, a weird French or Italian thing, is it? No. I never got it either. You know, but... I There's think... your Puma. It shouldn't be this comfortable in a coupe, but it feels very, very comfortable. windows are. So this is probably 
I think this is almost my favourite car that you own right now. Really? Well, when, I, when you first bought this thing and told me what you were going to do with it, I was just really into it. And I, I like the, the colour, I like the wheels. So what is this? This is 4.2. It's 4.2. Yeah. See, again, um, I, I twin know you... carbs, it's nothing, it's just a stock engine. It's, it's a nice I li- one, though. I like the... I like the st- I don't really want a V12. The one. V12's a bit heavier. Yeah. Um, you know, the weight's in the wrong place, so as much as a much more exotic engine, you know, you don't... I don't think you buy this car for the engine, you buy it for the... This is a cruiser. This is, this is exactly what you're doing. It's arm on the centre console. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Driving one-handed, that's what it is. I bought this one in Saint-Tropez. Saint-Tropez? Yeah. All right, okay, that's not Britain. The rationale was that um, it would have had a warmer life and it wouldn't be necessarily that rusty. It was a, it was a left-hand drive car? It was a left-hand drive car. Right. And because of the way they built up the bulkhead, they're not that difficult to change over, actually. Right, okay. Um, Do you know what? I can, you, you can definitely feel that you've lowered it and stiffened it from back here. Yeah, it hasn't got that wallow about no, it. No, the back sitting... And the steering's quite, quite heavy. Yeah. Different mirrors. No, well, different mirrors. The kind yeah. of traditional 60s sports mirrors. Yeah. Which I thought were suited to the car. They're not yeah. very good to use, but uh, especially that one. <laughs> I can't see anything out of that one. What size wheels are they? Are they They're 18 18-inch. inch. They look really good, I think. And I've, you know, and I really studied what wheel they should be. You know, I, 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 I took um, images of the car and tried different wheels to scale on them, you know, and just Photoshop them to make sure I got the right size. I mean, 20 inch of this car would be wrong, as much as I love 20 inch wheels. It would just look a bit 17s too... 17s weren't enough, so the 18s were just enough to give it that, yeah. that edge. And because it was lowered, um, it kind of all balanced out well. It's not particularly quick. Um, no, but it's it's the style of the XJC. But it's just a lovely car. To I look just at. love the pillarless. I love the roof line, this this C pillar, and it's very civilized to drive. You can sit in this. I could drive to Scotland in this. Yeah, no problem. You sit happily at seventy plus, yeah. and um, quite relaxing. I've got my iPhone rigged up to it, so I can listen to my music. Or the, got a good radio in it. How many, is this the only Jaguar you own? Yes. This it is, is only, isn't it? Yeah, it is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the only one I own. It's the only one I ever really, no, I own the Mark II, of course. Of course, the one that you so, reimagined, yeah. The one I reimagined and then I, I did sell that. Um, that was a very, very expensive car, of course. That was, a, I drove that. You and, drove it, And it yeah. was really nice. It was, it was That quick. was well sorted. It was, it was well quick. quick. It was not having a Jaguar, I kind of missed that. I wanted a Jag. Yeah. And this was always my absolute favourite. And yeah. I never really got round to it because they were very difficult to find. Yeah. Do but you it think feels quite civilised, isn't it? It feels fantastic. This you could daily drive this. You could daily well I might well do a bit of that now. I need to get my cars out more often and use them. Yeah. And you know, and even if they get dirty and they get a little bit abused and you know, I just have to keep on top of them. It's fine. I, I don't but it's keeping it's not, it's not a trailer queen. Well, sometimes these things go wrong less when you use them more. That's true, things perish. Yeah. yeah. The interior is gorgeous. Well, I had it retrimmed. It's a bridge of wear leather. I'm not quite sure which colour it is. I think it's a Jaguar colour, actually. And the walnut, of course, I had redone because it's a new dashboard. I was oh, yeah. able to do it. So this is a, the dark walnut out of the XF, uh, XFR. What, what I always find amusing was everybody said, well, Jaguars are all about wood and leather. Well, the leather was default as the kind of most exotic material to trim the car in. Yeah. Um, although the door trims were not always leather, by the way. These are, but they weren't originally. They were they were vinyl. Okay. And um, the only wood in this car is a dashboard. There's no wood anywhere else. Right. You know, the old Jags used to have wood everywhere. Yeah, they stuff. did. Why did you leave Jag? Well, I'd done 20 years. Yeah. I only kind of planned to do 10 to 15. I came in there with a mission to try and bring it back to where I felt it should be, where yeah. certainly the team around me felt it should be. Yeah. It probably took a bit longer than I'd hoped. Things do. And I got to the point after I pace and the next XJ, which you, do, you haven't seen yet, Yeah. I felt i kind of done what I needed to do. Yeah. You know? Two generations of XJ. The I pace was very significant. The oh. F-type was significant. Yeah. The XF was significant and then revamping the XJ into something very different. Yeah. So I'd kind of 
fulfilled my mission. So very I pace nice, is uh, still a really, really good design. I, I like the I like the I pace a lot. It needs a more of a the I pace needs more visibility. I think you know I'm not sure the world really knows it, about it. In terms enough. of marketing, in terms, yeah, in of, terms of people knowing about it, yeah, you know, I think people see it, yeah, and they're probably curious to what it is. Yeah, know? a lot. Of, I've I've had this. Yeah, you know I remember when I drove one. People said, "What is that? It's a Jag." Yeah, that takes a bit of recalibration. It does. Yeah, but, but it's coming. The sales, I believe, are doing well, and um, it'll get a little bit more visibility now. Yeah, the idea with this Jag was to kind of, I wouldn't call this a resto mod because it's original drivetrain. Well, again, I've done the things to it I felt were important, like the wheels, the stands, and yeah, you know, just having a nice, nice colour scheme. Do you know, if it wasn't for you, I would never have met Prince Philip. Because you know when you got that award, yes. and went the to Minerva Medal. The Minerva Medal. Wh nice. where, where was the Where was the palace? St James's Palace. St James's Palace. Yeah. And you kindly I'd, had you, dinner with them. Yeah, you invited me there, which was a fantastic uh, experience in itself. But then I then ended up meeting Prince Philip. Quite a character, isn't and it? And I wore. I got warned that he might be a bit sweary, and he didn't disappoint. It was excellent. <laughs> It really yeah, was excellent. I like him. And if it weren't for you, I, w I wouldn't have met the drummer from Iron Maiden. Oh, Nico. Yeah. <laughs> and what, where Another were character, in a very different way. Yeah. I've been very privileged so, to meet a lot of fascinating people. Yeah. And the common interest being motor cars rather than their specialist subjects, you know. Well, but, you start with cars and you work back from that rather yeah. than meeting and talking about everything else and then getting to cars. Yeah. I've found, you know, in my limited life that the two things bring people together regardless of class, nationality or whatever, where they come from, it's cars and music. Yeah. And uh, they have a very, very common thread with, yeah. with regard to passion and enthusiasm and, yeah. and understanding. You know, I, I can go to most parts of the world and talk about this car and people know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. The ones that they'd that be interested in, I mean. Is we were we were in America in um, a Pebble Beach, yeah, and um, old uh, Brian Johnson from ACDC, Brian Johnson, yeah, who turned up in a Can Am car. He did. When you and I were walking around looking at Porsche three five sixes, and he yeah. turned up in this deafening, yeah, I remember that Can Am thing. The one guy I feel very privileged to know and, and became a very good friend is, is of course Jay Leno. Well, that's and why I dressed as him today, Ian. I think of me you as a, a damn sort of, shirt on, of think of me as a crap car Jay Leno, Ben. Oh dear. You but know I, Jay quite well then. The reason we well we spent the Mille Miglia together, that's four days in the car together. Oh yeah, that's true. We didn't fall out. But he no, seems when like I go a to LA, guy. yeah, when I go to LA I did go and visit him as often as I can. You've recently sold a escort. No. RS two thousand, yes. Yeah. Uh, in, in that lovely blue colour with the blue stripes on it. Um, it's Mark I, nice car, immaculate. But um, I kind of decided I've got to have to trim down my... Uh, I don't collect cars, I just buy cars. You've got like. a hoard. <laughs> you trim it down because you just can't keep on top of it and... Well, no, no, I just run out of space, really. Yeah. You know, so I have to really start to rationalise them. Yeah. And that's a very, very difficult process. So the Escort's gone. Probably because I drove it least. Really? Yeah. You know, when you look at it all, and I'm sure it's the same for you, this all reflects back to your former formative years when you 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 kind of were eager to get so have certain things in your life when you grew up. Yeah. The XJ Coupe was one of them. The XJ Chevette was certainly one of them. Yeah. The hot rod, um, the mini. I'd always had minis. I wanted another one. Beetles. Yeah. History there. Yeah. And then, of course, the car we haven't spoken much about, the Porsche 911. Who, yeah. who, who has never wanted a Porsche 911? Well, I still want one. It's and, still eluded me, Ian. And the 993 was always my favourite. Yeah, I like. I would have a 993 or a 964. I like those. And they were the last air-cooled one, of course. Which yeah. I, I love air-cooled engines. I, I just love the simplicity of it. I've, I've built yeah. Beetle engines before, so I know that's only halfway there, not even that, but it, I just have that great affinity to the... The yeah. sound in the back. I like it too. And it's very mechanical. Yeah. And I just, I'm very at home with it. Have you ever wanted a Ferrari or a Lamborghini? Or yeah, a... I did. I wanted, I always wanted a Ferrari. Um, 
it was always the thing to have as a Ferrari. And okay. Of course, the Ferrari I wanted a 250 short wheelbase. Oh, so you picked a cheap one then? So, uh, but I wanted one before they became the Mega Pro. I wanted one as a kid. Have you know? ever driven one? I've driven two or three now, yeah. Have you got you? I, I, I drove um, SWB one. Have you? The one with the the the, 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 the Rob Walker car. Yeah. I've driven that up through the Highlands of Scotland. Have you? No, oh, that was just that was a day of all days. That was probably one of the highlights of my life. A two fifty short wheelbase through the Highlands, of through Scotland. the Scottish Highlands. Yeah. It was mega. But I kind of I went off Ferraris later on because they suddenly became a style I didn't like anymore. Mm. Uh, they were always very pure. Pininfarina, Pininfarina always did beautiful cars. And the, they had a restraint about them, which I thought was very beautiful and Italian. And then at some point, maybe 15 years ago, they all went a little bit yeah. uh, flowery for my liking, you know. Thank you so much for watching The Late Break Show. I've been Johnny Smith, car pervert, and this has been Ian Callum's Life in Cars.